Here we're going to solve an interesting exponential diophantine equation, and we're going to use the notion of the order of an integer modulo n. So the equation that we want to solve over all natural numbers is 7 to the y plus 2 equals 3 to the x. Like I said, we're going to use this notion of order, so let's recall that. So the order of m modulo n is r if m to the r is congruent to 1 mod n, but m to the s is not congruent to 1 mod n for all s, which are strictly smaller than r. So in other words, r is the smallest number such that m to the r is congruent to 1 mod n. And then here are some facts. We'll check one of them, and that is the order of 3 mod 7 is 6. The order of 7 mod 13 is 12. The order of 3 mod 19 is 18. And then finally, the order of 7 mod 37 is 9. Okay, so like I said, let's go ahead and check this first one. And we'll do that just by repeated exponentiation. So we know that 3 to the 1 is obviously just equal to 3 mod 7. And so that's clearly not congruent to 1 mod 7. Now we'll do 3 squared. So 3 squared is equal to 9, but 9 is congruent to 2 mod 7. And now we can just multiply kind of both sides of this congruence by 3. So multiplying the left-hand side will give us 3 cubed. And then multiplying the right-hand side will give us 6. So 3 cubed is 6 mod 7. And now we can keep going. So 3 to the 4th. So that's going to be the same thing as 3 times 6. But 3 times 6 is 18. But 18 is 4 mod 7 because it's four more than 14, which is a multiple of seven. So we can write here four mod seven. Now multiplying both sides by three, we'll get three to the fifth is congruent to 12 mod seven, but 12 is congruent to five mod seven. So we, here we can write five mod seven. And then finally, three to the sixth is congruent to 15 mod seven, but 15 is the same thing as one mod seven. And so notice we did not hit 1 mod 7 until we raised this to the 6th power. So 6 is the smallest exponent such that 3 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7. And so that's the same thing as saying the order of 3 mod 7 is 6. Or in the shorthand, we would write ord mod 7 of 3 equals 6, like we had over here. Now you can check the remaining three, and there are some tricks that we didn't employ here that make the calculation a little shorter, but what you'll end up with is these three last orders. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up and then we'll look at the solution. So before we go into the meat of the solution, we're gonna check a couple of small cases first because our big solution will not work for these small cases out as we'll see. So those cases will be X and Y are less than or equal to two. And we can check these by hand to notice that one zero is a solution. And so we can see that one zero is a solution because notice that seven to the zero plus two is equal to three, but that's equal to three to the one. And so that satisfies this equation. And then we can also check that two comma one is a solution. And that's because seven to the one plus two is equal to seven plus two, which is nine, which is three squared. So those are our two solutions when x and y are less than or equal to two. You can check that there are no more solutions with x and y less than or equal to two, so that's pretty easy to do. And now we're gonna move into the second case when x and y are bigger than or equal to three. So we already looked at our small cases when x and y are less than or equal to two. Now we're gonna look at the more general case when x and y are bigger than or equal to three. And in that case, we can actually do a trick on our given equation, and that goes as follows. So let's write 7y plus 2 equals 3 to the x. Now I can subtract 9 from both sides. So notice if I subtract 9 here and I subtract 9 here, then that allows me to rewrite this in the following way. So I've got 7 to the y minus 7 equals 3 to the x minus 9. Now what I can do is factor a seven out of the left-hand side and a nine out of the right-hand side. So that'll give me seven times the quantity seven to the y minus one minus one equals nine times the quantity three to the x minus two minus one. Now we can play this game, which is we know that the left-hand side, so I'll maybe go ahead and call this thing blue star. 
and we know that the left hand side of this blue star is a multiple of seven, but that tells us so is the right hand side because the left hand side and the right hand side are equal. Now we know that nine is not a multiple of seven. So what that means is three to the X minus two minus one is a multiple of seven. So let's go ahead and write that down. So three to the X minus two minus one is a multiple of seven. But now rewriting that using the notion of congruence modulo seven, we have that three to the X minus two is congruent to one mod seven. So again, that's just by the definition of congruence modulo seven. But now we're gonna use this fact over here. So we know that the order of three mod seven is equal to six. And then we have a power of three, which is congruent to one mod seven. So that means that exponent must be a multiple of the order. In other words, it has to be a multiple of six. So let's go ahead and write that down. We have X minus two must be a multiple of six. So I'll write it as six K for some K, which is a natural number. And then let's go ahead and write, this is because the order modulo seven of three is equal to six. We checked that one. Now we're gonna loop this back into the blue equation and keep going. So now let's notice that the right hand side of the blue equation, I'll just put a blue right hand side, will be nine to the three to the six K minus one. So I've just replaced X minus two with six K. So now I can factor this thing. So that's gonna be equal to nine and then three to the six minus one. And then we've got something left over after we factor out a three to the six minus one. So it's a bit tricky, but you can look up, it's a kind of standard factorization. This is gonna be three to the six times K minus one plus three to the six times K minus two, all the way down to three to the six plus one. Okay, fantastic. And then the most important thing to notice here is that this term right here is a multiple of 13. So I'll let you guys check that, but uh, suffice to show that that thing is just a multiple of 13, which means we can write this entire equation as um, 13 times something, and I'll just call that something this purple box. Okay, but now we know the right-hand side of this equation is a multiple of 13, but that means the left-hand side is also a multiple of 13. Okay, great. But seven is not a multiple of 13, but that means seven to the Y minus one minus one is a multiple of 13. So we can say seven to the Y minus one minus one is a multiple of 13. But again, rewriting that as congruence modulo 13, we have that seven to the Y minus one is congruent to one modulo 13. Now we're going to use the fact that the order of seven mod 13 is equal to 12. And that means that Y minus one is a multiple of 12. So maybe we'll call it 12 L where L is some natural number. And just like before, this is because the order mod 13 of seven is equal to 12. So we didn't check that one, but you guys can check that pretty easily. Okay, so now we're gonna loop that process a couple of more times and then we'll be done. But I'm running out of room, so I'll summarize what we just found on the top of the next board and we'll keep going. Up to this point, we have reduced our problem to solving the seven times the quantity seven to the Y minus one minus one equals nine times the quantity three to the X minus two minus one. And on the previous board, we argued that X minus two was a multiple of six and that Y minus one was a multiple of 12. And we did that via the order of three modulo seven and the order of seven modulo 13. Now we're gonna go ahead and play this game again. So we're going to use the fact that Y minus one is a multiple of 12 and plug that into the left-hand side of this equation. So again, let's go ahead and call this equation blue star. And now we have left-hand side of blue star is equal to seven times seven to the 12 L minus one. Okay, 
Now we can factor this just like we did before. So that's going to be 7 times 7 to the 12 minus 1. And then 7 to the 12 L minus 1 plus dot 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 plus 1 at the end. But the important thing to notice here is that 7 to the 12 minus 1 is a multiple of 19. Great. So that means we can write this entire side of the equation as 19 times something, and I'll call that something, again, a purple box. So just to reiterate, we have the left-hand side of the equation is a multiple of 19, but that's going to make the right-hand side of the equation also a multiple of 19. So in other words, we have 9 times 3 to the x minus 2 minus 1 is a multiple of 19. We know that 9 is not a multiple of 19, but that makes 3 to the x minus 2 minus 1 a multiple of 19. So 3 to the x minus 2 minus 1 is a multiple of 19. Or written with the notion of congruence modulo 19, we have 3 to the x minus 2 is congruent to 1 mod 19. But as you guessed, we're going to use this kind of fact again. So we know the order of 3 mod 19 is equal to 18. That makes this exponent x minus 2 a multiple of 18. So let's go ahead and write that down. We have x minus 2 is a multiple of 18. I'll write that as 18m. And this is just sum m, which is a natural number. Now we're going to loop that back into the right-hand side of the equation. And we're actually almost done. This seems like it's endless, but we're actually almost to the end here. So let's go ahead and point that out. We have the right-hand side of the equation is now equal to 9 times 3 to the 18m minus 1. But just as we did before, so I won't write it all out, this is going to be equal to the 3 to the 18 minus 1 times something by factoring this term where I've grouped the 9 into the something in this case. Okay, and now what you want to notice is that 3 to the 18 minus 1 is a multiple of 37. So let's go ahead and write that down. This is a multiple of 37, which means we can write this whole side of the equation as 37 times something, and I'll call that something this blue box. So in other words, we have the right-hand side of the equation is a multiple of 37. That means the left-hand side is also a multiple of 37. We know that 7 is not a multiple of 37. That means 7y minus 1 minus 1 is a multiple of 37. And let's just go ahead and jump right to the congruence, modulo 37. That means 7 to the y minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 37. Great. But what that tells us... <clears throat> is that y minus 1 has to be a multiple of the order of 7 modulo 37. But notice the order of 7 modulo 37 is 9. So that means y minus 1 is a multiple of 9. So we can write y minus 1 is equal to 9 to the n for some natural number n. So now we're going to take this and loop it back into here. And notice that the left-hand side of this thing is now equal to 7 times 7 to the 9n minus 1. And then through a similar factorization, so that's equal to 7, 7 to the 9 minus 1, and then a bunch of other terms, you can actually check that 7 to the 9 minus 1 is a multiple of 27. So let's go ahead and write that down in here, multiple of 27. So in other words, this is equal to 27 times something, which I'll write a blue box here. But now I'm going to reduce that modulo 27. So what we'll end up with is the left-hand side of this equation is congruent to 0 modulo 27. And now we'll analyze the right-hand side of the equation using this fact. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and jump back to the right-hand side of the equation. And notice that we can write the right-hand side of the equation as 9 times 3 to the 6k minus 1. But now I want to write that 6k a little bit differently. I want to write that as 9 times 3 cubed to the 2k minus 1. 
But notice 3 cubed is equal to 27. So this is equal to 9 times 27 to the 2k minus 1. But now if we reduce this thing modulo 27, notice this guy is a multiple of 27, so that goes to 0. And we're left with this entire thing is congruent to minus 9 modulo 27. So let's see what we end up with. We have the left-hand side of this equation is congruent to 0 mod 27. The right-hand side of this equation is congruent to minus 9 modulo 27. But that is a contradiction. So what that means is there are no solutions in this current setup when x and y are bigger than or equal to 3. So I'll clean up the board and we'll summarize the whole problem. Okay, let's summarize this problem. So we were trying to find all the natural number solutions to seven to the y plus two equals three to the x. We carefully checked just by hand all of the values when x and y were less than or equal to two, and we got that one, zero, and two, one were solutions. And then we played this long and drawn out game involving the order of some numbers modulo n for different values of n, in the case when x and y were bigger than or equal to 3, and that ended it, us with this contradictory congruence, which was 0 is congruent to minus 9 modulo 27, which that is not true. So like I said, that gave us some sort of contradiction, which means there were no solutions in this case. So in other words, these are the only solutions to this equation. Okay, that's a good place to stop.